Hello everyone, I'm Jong Yeonbae from Seoul National University. Today, I will talk about our research, Flesh n e u r o n the DNA training system using a high-performance SSD as a backing store. This is a joint work with my colleagues at Seoul National University and my advisor, Jay Lee. Deep learning surrounds us every day, and this will only increase with time. Since the breakthrough application of DNNs to image classification and speech recognition, the number of applications that use DNNs has exploded. DNN workloads are categorized into training and inference. Let's take an image classification as an example. For inference, an input image takes a forward pass through the DNN to make a prediction like bicycle in this example. In contrast, Training takes at least three times more computation per input as it consists of three steps, forward propagation, backward propagation, and weight update. And this process is repeated until we achieve a desired prediction accuracy. Let's look at the data reuse pattern of DNA training in greater details. During the forward pass, a DNA layer performs matrix multiply of input activations X and weight W to compute the output activations Y. In the backward pass, the error between the prediction and the ground truth like dy in the figure is propagated back through the DNN. And then, the weights W are updated to minimize the error. In this process, the input activations X are reused to calculate the weight gradient dW. This implies that, unlike inference, All the activations computed in the forward path must be kept in the GPU memory until the backward path is completed. Therefore, the memory usage for activations continues to increase as DNNs are becoming deeper to improve accuracy and as we employ larger batch size to improve training throughput. As shown in the figure, This severely limits the space of trainable DNNs as the memory usage exceeds the GPU memory capacity, also known as memory capacity wall. One of the popular approaches is buffering memory, which stores the intermediate activations in the host DRAM. However, these buffering memory solutions can interfere with the CPU process for memory bandwidth. As shown in the graph, The throughput of DNN training can be noticeably degraded when the CPU is running bandwidth-intensive tasks. Another storage to avoid the problem is MVM SSD. However, MVM SSD has a much smaller read and write bandwidth than DRAM, and it still consumes host DRAM capacity and CPU cycles to process disk I.O. To alleviate the limitation of disk I.O., P2P communication can be performed without consuming host resources for data movement between GPU and MVM SSD. Thus, we propose Flash in Neuron, a DNN training system using a high-performance SSD as a backing store. Our work exploits three key ideas to design the efficient SSD-backed system. First, we design the offloading scheduler to fully utilize the scarce SSD write bandwidth. Second, we orchestrate tensor offloading and prefetching at runtime using Memory Manager. Finally, we implement the lightweight I.O. stack for direct communication between SSDs and GPU. As a result, Flash n e u r o n increases the trainable batch size by 12.4 to 14 times compared to the baseline using 16GB HVM. And with this, we can improve the training throughput by up to 37.8% by increasing the batch size. Finally, Flash n e u r o n provides 35.3 times higher cost efficiency or dollar per gigabyte for training system. Flash n e u r o n consists of three components, a f r o a d i n g scheduler, memory manager, and peer-to-peer -peer direct storage access. The offloading scheduler identifies a set of tensors to offload and generates an offloading schedule. The scheduler first performs a profiling iteration to collect the various runtime information. 
The profiling result is passed to the offloading scheduler, and the scheduling result is returned to the DNN training framework. The memory manager orchestrates data transfers and manages the tensor allocation and deallocation caused by tensor offloading and prefetching. Lastly, peer-to-peer -peer direct storage access enables direct communication between the GPU and NVMe SSDs to minimize host intervention during tensor offloading and prefetching to SSDs. Now, I will explain how the offloading scheduler works by going through an example. The offloading scheduler derives an optimal tensor offloading schedule for a given target batch site based on the profiling results. The profiler identifies setup tensors to be realized during the fourth pass and relevant information for each tensor such as tensor size and tensor's compressibility. In this example, the total transfer size is 24 MB, but the assumed GPU physical memory is 8 MB. Thus, the scheduler needs to upload 16 MB worth of the tensor. The first page is to iteratively select a certain number of tensors from the beginning. The selection is continued until the size of the remaining tensors fits in the total GPU memory size. As shown in the example, the scheduler first selects the tensor A at the beginning. Then, the remaining amount of data that needs to be uploaded from the GPU memory is 10 MB. After that, the scheduler selects the tensors of B, C, and D in order until the speed over side is zero and the remaining tensors fit in the GPU memory. At this point, the scheduler checks whether the total data transfer time is smaller than the total execution time of all layers in the forward pass. If this condition is satisfied, the scheduler adopts the schedule and stops. However, in this example, the tensor offloading time exceeds the total execution time of forward pass, and thus the offloading scheduler enters the second phase. The second phase replaces the tensors already selected as offloading candidate with more compression-friendly tensors. The scheduler first inspects the last offloaded tensor D. The tensor D is incompressible, and thus the scheduler removes this tensor for the offloading candidate and adds more compressible tensors to the offloading candidate. The scheduler again checks if the tensor offloading time still exceeds the total forward pass time. If so, the tensor keeps replacing already selected tensors with the more compressible but not yet selected tensors. The details for this procedure is explained in the paper. In this example, still the tensor offloading is over the total execution time of forward pass. Once the total transfer time does not exceed the forward path execution time, the scheduler stops. In the example, replacing tensor B with tensor F satisfies the condition, and the scheduler is set to upload tensor A, C, E, and F. P2P DSA is a lightweight layer to enable direct uploading and prefetching tensors from GPUs to SSDs. To maintain each tensor's metadata uploaded to SSDs, P2P DSA contains a metadata table consisting of tensor index, an LBA value, and a flag to check the I.O. completion. Let's take an example of the tensor offloading case. When the P2P DSA receives a tensor offload request, P2P DSA extracts the index, GPU memory address, and data movement direction from the transfer request. In step 2, the LBA allocator is called to allocate a set of contiguous blocks. The LBA of the first block is updated at the metadata table. Next, P2P DSA creates a command for each logical block and then enqueues it to the command queue. In step 4, the commands in the queue are fetched and issued to the MVM SSD. After the data transfers are executed, P2P DSA will clear the completion queues and update the metadata table by setting the corresponding done flag. We prototype our research on PyTorch. We evaluate on the NVIDIA Tesla 300 GPU with two MVM SSDs. 
we choose four state-of-the-art models and scale them up to represent future DNA models with much deeper layer. As a result, flesh neuron increases the maximum runnable batch size by a factor of 12.4 to 14 times compared to the vanilla baseline using GPU memory only. With this, flesh neuron improves the training throughput by up to 37.8%. To demonstrate superior performance isolation of flesh neuron over the conventional buffering of memory approach, we perform a case study of collocating data augmentation tasks running on CPU with DNN training on GPU. The performance loss of buffering of memory degrades by 40.2% when the CPU workload utilizes 90% of the available memory bandwidth. However, flesh neuron still achieves 20.2% throughput gains over the baseline. In summary, we propose flesh neuron, the first buffering on SSD approach, to offload intermediate data to high performance MVM SSDs. Flesh neuron enables large batch training of very deep neural networks by offloading scheduler and lightweight IO stack. This is the end of my talk. Thank you for listening.